What's up everybody? Today we're talking about how to do this freeze frame kind of echo effect in After Effects. Check it out. Hey everybody, if this is your first time here, my name's Dustin. I make videos about making videos, so Final Cut, Premiere, After Effects, tutorials. I also like to make some cinematic personal projects. Those will also be on here, so if that sounds interesting to you, hit subscribe, click the bell. Today we're talking about this freeze frame echo effect that I saw on this guy named Jeremiah's Instagram. His IG is that one blonde kid. If you don't follow him already, you should definitely follow him. His stuff is super sick. So yeah, he did this effect right here for this pro skater. I don't know who this pro skater is. I mean, I'm wearing a Vance hat, so I should really know who this guy is. But anyway, I saw this effect and I had to learn how to do it. So I spent a lot of time and pain and hours in After Effects trying to figure out how to do it. Now that I figure out how to do it, it's actually really easy, really smooth. All right, before we actually start talking about doing the effect, I did want to talk a little bit about what your shot needs to look like. The big point is you want to shoot it in a way that really accentuates the echo effect where you can see it, not something where you're coming straight at the camera or straight away from the camera because then you wouldn't be able to see the echo that you're leaving behind. Another thing about this effect is that you really want your subject moving quickly through the frame. So someone skating, someone running, a car driving by. It can also be an object moving quickly through the frame, but you want it moving quickly so that you have a lot of these echoes to leave behind. It kind of pushes it more. And also all of these things are, you know, totally subjective. Do what you want, do what you think is gonna look cool. Another thing I recommend is shooting this in a higher frame rate, like 60 or 120. I shot this shot right here in 120, but 60 would totally be high enough. The main reason I say that is I found the effect that we're gonna be using in After Effects responds better to slow down footage. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute when we get in there. All right, so now that we have our clip in After Effects, we're gonna let it play through. <laughs> Definitely not on full resolution, right? Am I right? Because my computer will blow up. So first thing you're gonna do is go in here and get your 3D camera tracker effect. Drag it onto our clip. So earlier when I was talking about this effect being super tedious, it was because of the 3D camera tracker. That's one of the big reasons I slowed my footage down first. In my experience working on this effect, slowing it down and then letting After Effects analyze my footage, worked so much better for me. I don't know if After Effects just can understand the footage a lot better since it's slower and there's not a lot of motion. Another thing I had to do and you may have to do is play around with these settings and these parameters within the 3D camera tracker. I made sure to come down here and check detailed analysis and change the solve method to tripod pan. Um, I'm not an After Effects genius. I'm pretty sure that's because the motion, even though it was on a gimbal, it really does look like a tripod pan because my homie Jacob's just, he's just phenomenal gimbal operator, I guess, I don't know. But also this may differ depending on what your footage looks like. Just play around with these settings. We're gonna let this analyze. This really doesn't take that long. All right, sick, that's done analyzing and it gave us all these super cool looking color marks. One thing I like to do with the 3D camera tracker is come into track point size and turn that up so my cool little color marks are bigger and I can see them better. So the next thing you need to do is click and hold and grab a good amount of these and then you're going to right click and do create null and camera. This is when we get to actually doing the freeze frame effect. So find the frame that you want to be your freeze frame in the video, put your little playhead over it and then come up to composition, save frame as file and then come and change your render settings so that it's a PNG sequence. We'll save that in a great place because we are very organized, very, very organized. Next thing you wanna do is find where you save that, grab it, and we're gonna drag it into our composition, and then we wanna line it up. Okay, this is a problem I kept running into. So you have to make sure that when you save your freeze frame as a PNG, you make sure you turn it back on full resolution or it's gonna give you not the full resolution photo. <laughs> So let's try that one more time. All right, sick. So now we have that correct size freeze frame. And then you just wanna make sure you take that layer and line it up with your playhead. Another quick hotkey tip. I'm just full of hotkey tips, bro. Um, you wanna drag your thing and hold shift. And if you hold shift, it'll snap it exactly to your playhead. So here comes another really fun, tedious thing. We're gonna cut out old Dustin on his longboard here with the good old pen tool. This doesn't have to be perfectly exact, but get it pretty close because you don't want the background to be in your freeze frame. You want it to just be you. All 
All right, sick, I'm done masking that and I got one more sick hot key for you. Hit shift question mark and it'll back you up, zoom you out where you can see your whole frame. Another thing we need to do is actually go in and mask out this background in between my legs. So we'll just add another quick mask. And then we need to make sure we go into our mask settings down here and turn that to subtract. So it takes it away. Let's hit shift question mark one more time. Watch this kind of magic. Bam, Oh, dang, dang bro, dang. On to the next step. You're gonna wanna come over here and enable this as a 3D layer. That's what this little cube icon means. If you can't see that, hit toggle switches and modes. It should let you see it. So we're gonna click that and what I think is gonna happen is our freeze frame is gonna jump somewhere else. So our very last step is taking our sticker, our freeze frame, and placing it back over our original video. So we're gonna use all the transform options and since this is a 3D object now, you not only have the X and the Y axis, you have the Z axis, which is getting closer and further away from the camera in 3D space. So if you look here, we have X, Y, and Z rotation, X, Y, and Z position, then that can be really confusing. I mean, and this needs to be pretty exact or you're gonna see it jump off the frame when the freeze frame composition starts. And the thing about it being in 3D space is that Although yes, like my head is lined up, everything might not be lined up. So a good way to check if you're exactly lined up is to turn off your freeze frame and turn it back on a couple times. If we turn it off, we can see that it moves a little bit. And this is where the 3D space thing comes in. Um, so what I'm thinking I need to do is rotate it on the Y axis and kind of spin it a little bit. But for real, once you do one freeze frame and you're ready to do the other 10 or whatever, you get in this flow state, it's really nice and it goes a lot faster than it feels like it goes. And as you can see, these are very small adjustments, like negative 0.5 on the rotation. Sweet, so let's hit our shift question mark again and watch this play back. Another thing you may have seen in the video that I posted was the freeze frames had a good bit of motion blur on them. So what I did for that is enable motion blur for the composition and then come down here and enable motion blur for the freeze frame. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is speed the footage back up to give you that like of the freeze frames. So what we're gonna do is select all of our layers, pre-comp those, and we can come down here to our pre-comp, right click it, go to time and go to time stretch. Uh, since I've already done this, I know that 30 is the stretch factor that I really liked for this. So let's see what this looks like. All right, I'm digging it. So after this, you just need to do that probably between nine or 10 more times, depending on the footage that you have and you'll get something like this. Now, as you saw in there at the end, I went and slowed down the last few seconds and added those glitch effects to the freeze frames. If you wanna see that in another tutorial, be sure to comment down below, or you could check out this one right here that I watched, it is really good. If you wanna learn how to do some glitch effects and after effects, that's all I have for you today. I really, really appreciate you watching this video. If you learned something, if you enjoyed it, make sure to hit like down below, that truly helps me out. If you wanna see more, hit subscribe, be sure to click the bell so that you get notified whenever I upload a video. I upload one new video every week, and the goal right now is to hit 500 subscribers by the end of November. Today's November 5th, I think we're at 340 something. So let's see if we can do 500 by the end of the month. Thank y'all so much for watching. I truly do appreciate all of you, especially the ones that watched all the way to this point. <laughs> That's all I have for you today, deuces.